हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर फाइन एंड यू हैव कंप्लीटेड आई थिंक कुलम्स लॉ नाउ लेट अस कैलकुलेट द फोर्स व्हेन मोर देन टू चार्जेस आर प्रेजेंट हियर यू हैव टू यूज सुपरपोजिशन प्रिंसिपल व्हेन एवर यू कैलकुलेट द फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्जेस यू हैव टू थिंक दैट अदर चार्जेस आर नॉट प्रेजेंट सो यू कैलकुलेट द फोर्स ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर चार्ज बाय थिंकिंग ऑफ सच पेयर्स विदाउट थिंकिंग द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अदर्स and then you will add all those forces vectorially think about here these are two charges q1 and q2 separated by a certain distance first question is where in between the two charges where the third charge q to be placed such that this q is in equilibrium if q1 and q2 are fixed so here in this to solve this type of question you have to think that these two charges are like charges or unlike charges whether the equilibrium position of third charge to be in between the two charges or outside extending this r vector so if these two charges are like charges then you see when you are placing this charge this charge if repel then this charge will also repel yeah if this charge is attracting then this charge will also attract that means you will see that force due to these two charges on the third charge q is opposite and if this forces are opposite then that can be added and made equal to zero to solve this you think of this distance as x so this will apply a force in this direction that is f1 and this q2 will apply a force in this direction here the result and force that is your f1 minus f2 will be zero you see we are adding vectorially as they are opposite so it's a subtraction so this will be f1 must be equal to f2 then only your result and force will be zero and this q will be at rest f1 will be k q1 q by x square and f2 will be k q q2 by r minus x whole square in this case you see this q k all cancel so you are getting q1 by x square and this is q2 by r minus x whole square this you will have to solve for x take your square root both side cross multiply and solve yeah you can directly cross multiply square it and then you solve but <coughs> if these two charges q1 and q2 are unlike charges one is positive other is negative in this case your equilibrium position of third charge cannot be in between that is here if this charge is repelling then this charge will attract yeah if this charge is attracting this charge will be repelling that means both the charge q1 and q2 are applying the force on q in the same direction so your result and force will be not zero they will be added for that reason if you take the position outside these two charges either here yeah here so suppose you are keeping the charge close to your q2 on the other side so you see this q2 if it is attracting then this q1 will be repelling so you see these forces are here opposite in direction so if you think of this as your x then one force will be k q1 q for q this distance is r plus x whole square and another will be your k q2 q by x square only difference is here you have to write one is your r plus x and another here you have seen r minus x so very fast you have to see that whether these two charges are like charges or unlike for like charges you can keep it in between where your this distance will be r minus x if these are unlike then you have to keep outside and one will be your r plus x but remember this distance where you are keeping that x will be close to your q1 you are close to your q2 that depends on the magnitude of the charge and it will be always closer to smaller charge closer to smaller charge so if you think that q1 is smaller then you place this q here and try to solve similarly suppose there is an equilateral triangle 
of side A. And you are having three identical charges Q, Q, Q on their vertices. And if you are asked to calculate the resultant force on any one charge. So you see, suppose you are calculating the force on this charge. Then leaving this charge, you see there are other two charges. So these two charges will apply force on this charge. So there will be two force. So this charge will apply a force in this direction and this charge will apply a force in this direction. One is your F1, other is F2. This two force when you are calculating K Q square by A square, you'll have to think that this charge is not present. Similarly, when you are calculating F2 as K Q by A square, you'll have to think that other charges are not present. So you see on this charge, there are two forces. Now you apply your vector rule. You use your parallelogram, complete this diagonal of this parallelogram will be your resultant and you know this angle will be 60. So your resultant force from your vector will be root of F1 square plus F2 square plus 2F1 F2 cos 60. You calculate individual force, place all these values and try to solve direction given in the figure. Similarly, if you think of that there is a square of side A and on these each vertices there are identical charges Q and you are asked to calculate the force on any one charge. So you see if you are asked to calculate the force on this charge then leaving this charge there are three more charges. So all these three charges will apply force on this charge where you are cal calculating force. So there will be three force. This charge will repel in this direction that is F1, this charge will apply a force in this direction and the charge number 3, for that reason you join it here and this will be produced that is F3 will be along the diagonal. While calculating each of these force, you assume that other charges are not present. So here F1 is KQ square by A square, F2 is again KQ square by A square but F3 is kq square and this diagonal which is your root 2a so this will be kq square by 2a square now you'll have to add all these three forces vectorially to get your resultant you already see that this f1 and f2 are perpendicular to each other and also equal so you can first calculate their resultant so this is simply pythagoras theorem f1 square and f2 square as these two are equal so their resultant will also be along the diagonal which is same as f3 so as f dash parallel to your f3 and in the same direction so your resultant force f will be simply f dash plus f3 so when values will be given you calculate each of these forces add them remember here this method applied as these two are equal for that reason their resultant is parallel to f3 but if f1 and f2 are not equal in that case you apply resolution the force which is not along x and y axis that is f3 you resolve it that will be f3 cos theta and other will be f3 sin theta and then you add your all x component you add all your y component you add now you know fx and fy are perpendicular so your resultant force will be your summation of fx whole square and summation of fy whole square and your direction will be as theta equal to 10 inverse of summation of fy by summation of fx similarly if a problem is there two identical simple pendulum here there is these bobs are given charges Q and Q. Length of the pendulum you can think of L. Now here some question may be asked that what is the tension in the thread? What is the distance between the two charges at equilibrium? So here in this case if you consider this angle as your 2 theta and this distance suppose x. Here you will have to use free body diagram as you have learned in class 11. Here one force will be as this having a mass so one force is wet here thread will have a tension and these two will ripple so force will be F in this direction that is KQ square by X square. 
Now again you see that this tension is not along your x and y axis, so resolve it. If this is theta, so this angle will be theta. So this is your t cos theta and this side is t sin theta. If it is equilibrium, then resultant force must be zero. So you can write t sin theta as equal to your Coulomb's force and your t cos theta is your weight. Now if you are not asked to calculate the tension, then simply you divide. If you divide these two, then you will get tan theta as f by mg. So you can calculate your force and whichever unknown that you can solve. But if you are asked to calculate the tension, then square and add and you will get simply t square as f square plus mg square. So like this you can solve other things also. <coughs> Similarly, if you see, if this charges q1 and q2 and here suppose a third charge q we are placing. If it is in equilibrium, you have already solved this. Now question is what kind of equilibrium it will be. Suppose these two are positive charge and this charge can be of any sign. <coughs> if this is in equilibrium, then remember kind of equilibrium is one is stable other is unstable and the third one is neutral. Neutral equilibrium means everywhere your result and force will be zero. So that is not possible. So here out of these two you'll have to select one. One is stable, other is unstable. So common thing is just you dip, displace this position of charge to some other position. Suppose you have displaced in this direction and then you calculate the resultant force. If you find that resultant force is opposite to your displacement, then after leaving that, the charge will return back to its initial position. In that case, it is stable. But after displacing it, if you find that resultant force due to these two charges is in the same direction as that of your displacement, then this is your unstable. Like this here, if these two charges are positive, if you displace it here, then this distance is decreasing. That means force due to your charge Q2 will be more. So if this is positive, then this Q2 will repel it. That means resultant force will be opposite. So this will be then stable. But if this charge is negative, then once you are displacing towards your Q2, Q2 force which is attractive, that will be more. So this charge will have a resultant force in the same direction as that of displacement. So it is unstable equilibrium. Okay, thank you. <coughs>